Okay, let's go to number four then. And that is rehearsal. And I have to say, I'm not always that disciplined in doing it. But I do know that if I look at my mind map, even though I might not be standing up and actually saying the whole presentation that I might be giving, because again, I know that I don't have to be word perfect. So I haven't written a script as such. I know roughly what I'm going to be saying and I've got my trigger words to help me with that, what I'm gonna talk about, because I already have the knowledge and what I roughly want to say. So those words just support me on the mind map to gear me, you know, to direct me in the right way. But um, what I'd like you to kind of share with our viewers is why rehearsal is important as well. Well, I think there's two aspects to rehearsal. One we've well, I've already sort of talked about, which is rehearsing your mind map before you do a big presentation. And really the rehearsal there is to check that it works, to check that the key words are actually prompting what, what you want it to. And, and doing a bit of refining. And actually when you're rehearsing, you, you, you quite often improve what you've yeah. got. You can, you, you can um, take out a few uh, bits and pieces and you can make it even, even simpler. Um, so that's one aspect of rehearsing. And, you know, you do need to do that before a presentation. Now, the second aspect of rehearsing is if you want it in your long term memory, because everything we've talked, I've talked about so far has been aimed at how to get stuff into your short term memory, which will last. It'll be there for about 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours. So, again, take the memory gurus who have various strategies. Um, I mean, one of which uh, is uh, the mental journey where you have places on a journey where you place your things you need to remember. And it's those places on the journey that become the triggers for the sequential stuff that, that you need to remember. Um, another popular one is the memory palace where the memory gurus, what they're doing is they've built palaces in their heads with multiple rooms and they're placing the things that they need to remember in, into rooms. And it's the items in the room that act as the trigger for the bits of information uh, that are often very abstract that they, they need to remember. That's the now, Sherlock Holmes method, right? <laughs> now, my, my point is that um, if, uh, if you take one of these uh, guys, um, Dominic O'Brien was one that I knew quite well uh, back in 1997. Dominic had been world memory champion for a, for a few years uh, then. Um, and... Uh, you know, if you test him a fortnight later on all the packs of cards that he'd, he'd memorized, um, it would be gone. And and actually, that's good, isn't it? Because <laughs> you, you, why would you want to rem remember 10 p shuffled packs of cards? Actually, you want to leave all those locations now available in your memory palace or your mental journey. You want to leave those now available for the next memory competition that you, you do. So um, that's an example of where you've memorized some stuff in the short term. You don't want it for the long term. So you, the last thing you want to do is rehearse it. Mm. Now, there are some memory things. Let's give you an example. There are some memory things that I do uh, that I do want to remember for the long term. Uh, one of them, and perhaps we could do this one time on, on one of these webinars. I can do a live demonstration. It's called, should, the night, yeah. it's, called, it's called The Night's Tour. Now, again, I think it was back it was back in about 2000. I did a demonstration at one of the Professional Speakers Association meetings where, you know, I, I, I did The Night's Tour. And basically, there are 64 squares um, on a chessboard. And, and what the memory challenge is, is for a member of the audience to place the knight on a square, a random square. And then what you do, and you do this blindfold, um, is that you tell, um, again, someone who knows chess, 
where to move the the knight. And what you're doing is you're moving the knight around the board such that it goes all the way around onto every square and finishes back where it started. And you're doing this all blindfold. Now, basically, that, I mean, you know, just to simplify it, I mean, it, it, when it's done, it seems, for people who don't know, it seems like an impossibility. But actually, all you're basically doing is memorizing 64 moves think about it so it's 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 quite small it's easier than memorizing pi to you know a thousand <laughs> decimal places which which some people do and um, so the the thing is that um i want to remember the night's tour uh so that i can do it again and again you know it's a bit of a it's potentially a bit of a party trick now just to say i've not done that probably live for 10 years so wow. i would take me a so so it you know long term memory is it is not there completely for the long term. Some of that will have, even though I've done lots of rehearsals, some of that will have disappeared, uh, and I you know struggle with it a little bit. But because it has been in long term memory, I would only need probably one or two rehearsals to get that back in there. So if you said to me, you know, in a month's time. You want me to do the night's tour live on uh, on on your webinar or whatever? Um, it wouldn't take me long to get that back up and running. So, <coughs> excuse me. To summarise rehearsal, when you're using um, a, 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 a memory technique and you want it for the short term, so for a presentation, whether it's uh, the mind map or whether it is some. Um, linking system that some uh, speakers use um if you're only going to give that talk once you you only need to rehearse it just to make sure that it's okay that isn't enough to put it from short term into long term memory so mm. if it's a speech that you're going to give over and over again and I'm not this type of speaker but you you know Michael there are lots out there that basically all they do they the whole career, they've only had three speeches, you yeah. know, and some some of them only one. And there's nothing wrong with that. And of course, they they are absolutely able to hone it right down. It's it's word perfect, if you like, because they've done it so so often. But to get there requires lots and lots of rehearsal to have got it into uh, your long term memory. Now, the talk I gave at Sandwell College. I don't intend to give that same talk again. I like my talks to be unique. So I've not rehearsed it again. So, but I could go back to the mind map and it's, it's nearly all there. So I could give something that is very similar to the talk that I gave, but it wouldn't be absolutely identical. Very interesting. And, and I think we, we briefly in our preparation, for this webinar, we also talked about space repetition, didn't we? Yeah. And I think that <clears throat> really works for preparing for a talk or presentation once you've done the mind map. And whether you're speaking all of the words out loud or not as part of your rehearsal, that might be something you do. Or instead, you could look at the mind map on different days and different intervals. Just explain the kind of interval thing again that you explained to me the other day, Barry. Yes, uh, I think it was uh, Tony Bazan who I first saw mention this. So it's not really scientific. But what I would say to anyone out there who's interested in memory, um, the best thing is not to listen to the ex so-called experts, but to try it out for yourself. So find the spaced repetition timeline that works best for you. But as a mm. general guide, um, it's the ones. So once you've got something fully prepared, uh, if you repeat it, you rehearse it again a minute or two later. So that's a very close time. That's just, you know, it's, it's just, you know, uh, re repeating it uh, really twice. It means that, you know, you've done it, you've prepared it, but you haven't actually delivered it. But now you do it out loud, and that's your first rehearsal. And you should do that, you know, fairly fairly quickly. Um, and then the one, so one hour. So do another rehearsal one hour, and then one day. 
So then you rehearse it the next day and then one week and then one month and then one quarter. Now, you may need more than that. So, for example, if you do it a day later, you've uh, and then when you come to a week, um, most of it is gone, you know that at least for that, memorizing that type of information, you'd need a few more rehearsals in your in your timeline. So, so really, you should discover your own best practice for this. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> but you find your own best practice uh, for this. But space repetition, as it's called, um, and what what it means is that you do more work at the front end. Yeah. You no. Know? Uh, and, and and less work as it goes along. This is the space repetition is the exact opposite of cramming, you know. And unfortunately, I, I really think that it is so sad that the only way of revising for you know for for passing exams that, that we we seem to be taught or by default is don't do anything you know you have the lessons don't do anything with them other than you know you've made the notes don't do anything with them until a week before the exams and then try to cram it all in yeah now, of course that does work in the sense that what you're doing is you're cramming it into your short term memory and as we've said these memory gurus can hold vast quantities of information in there but it's not permanent it's only 48 hours um so the thing is, we have an education system, if people are passing exams by cramming, where they don't know anything. <laughs> it's well documented that, you know, if, if, you ask these, if you ask people to take the, the exams that they've got, you know, grade ones or A's, A stars in, a month later, they'll do very poorly in it because if they use the cramming strategy, you know. Yeah. And if you understand the brain, that's perfectly understandable. So the strategy for passing uh, exams and knowing it for the future, which is really what we should be doing. I mean, you know, I think we should scrap exams. I don't want to go into that as a, an, ar an <laughs> argument. Uh, exams are part of the problem in, in, in edu ed education. So if we could scrap exams, that would be good. But because we can't, we should at least teach this space repetition, the idea yeah. that, you know, once someone has had a lesson, then they need to have a strategy for getting that into their long-term memory. And then mm. when it comes to the exams, all they've got to do is very light rehearsal um, of all the things they've covered, you know, over, over the year, because it's, it's, it's wired in. You're just checking that the wiring is, is still there. There's quite, I'll just finish on this. There's quite a good analogy, I think, about, uh, how the the memory patterns, memory traces are laid down. And that's imagine a very thick jungle. So if that's how you imagine the brain is a thick jungle. If you uh, cut a path through it once, okay, and you come back a week later, will you be able to find that path? Probably not, you know, probably not. If uh, If you immediately you've created that path you retrace your steps so that's the one within within a few minutes of doing it you go back and with your machete you 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 know go through the path again when you come back a day later there's a much better chance now of that path being there and if you hack away through that path again a day later there's a good chance now when you come back in a week that actually you can just you can see it. So then you 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 hack through it again. So it's like um, the same would be a, a cornfield if the jungle thing doesn't work. You know, if you if yeah. you make a if you trample very quickly through a cornfield, maybe it's not there a couple of days later. But if you keep trampling through, it's a per, it's a permanent uh, fixture. For, for, while, Hey, you're still there. So that that's an analogy. I love that. I love the jungle one. The jungle one, I think, is stronger than the cornfield one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cornfield is rather temporary, isn't it? The yes. jungle is likely to be there for a long time.